Hello, we'll go live in a minute, but first let me thank you for joining us for our first webinar as part of an ongoing series where we sit down with an assortment of successful Printify merchants to hear their stories, get some helpful tips, and learn from the successes and failures they had along the way in their merchant journey. Today, we'll be joined by Paul Brown, who runs Culture Popped on Etsy. Additionally, he heads a consulting agency that builds storefronts for POD merchants. He has agreed to share with us all the ups and downs of his journey to become a successful Etsy seller and how he's built a profitable business in the POD industry with Printify. Some of you that frequent our Facebook page, POD Rockstars, may already be familiar with Paul. As always, if you have questions as we go along, please drop them in the chat. All right, if you're ready, let's begin. All right, we are live. Hello, everybody. Thank you and welcome. As you just heard, this is our first webinar in a series of webinars we will be doing throughout the year where we sit down and have a conversation with some of Printify's most successful merchants. I am joined today by Paul Brown from the Garden State. He is the owner and operator of Culture Pop on Etsy, one of Etsy's most successful stores. Uh, thank you so much for joining us today, Paul. How are you doing? I'm doing okay. Just another beautiful day in uh, New Jersey with the seasons changing by the minute, you know, can't complain. Very, very happy to be here and very honored in a sense to be the first guy doing this. So, you know, no pressure or anything like that. We'll see. Great. <laughs> Thank you so much. And, and thanks again for joining us, Paul. Um, now, um, these webinars will be available on uh, printify.com slash webinars. And then after a while, we will put these up on our YouTube channel. So feel free to come back and watch again and again so you don't miss anything. Uh, now, again, uh, although this webinar will be focused primarily on success with, with Etsy, this certainly isn't only Etsy specific. So even if you operate your store on a different sales channel like uh, Shopify or eBay or Wix or what uh, whatever, um, you will still find plenty of value in this webinar because uh, there's going to be a lot of stuff that translates uh, over regardless of, of how you uh, choose to operate your, your POD store. There's going to be a lot of value and Paul is certainly going to be the one to deliver it to us. Thank you so much, Paul. Well, let's go ahead and get into this. Uh, why don't you tell us a little bit about yourself? Sure. Uh, long story short, I'm from Atlantic City. I have uh, I own my own web design and marketing agency here outside of the uh, outside of the area in the suburban out, outskirts of Atlantic City. Uh, I started my first print on demand shop. Uh, I think April or May will be four years. I believe it is. Uh, t I can't believe how quickly time goes by. And um, you know, uh, I I have my eyes have been open to the you know. Uh, the, the, the pitfalls and the successes and the ups and downs, you know, being the one guy that operates the entire shop, everything from beginning to end, I need to manage everything. So for sure, it's been a learning experience, but it's also been amazing uh, for me to kind of roll it into my daily life, working in web design, social media management, stuff like that. I've been able to kind of, you know, pick and pull things that work, things that don't work, learn the hard way, get things right the first time. It all depends. Every situation is different. And with me being such a lover of pop culture, as I am, I'm that guy who throws out a random movie quote in a in a conversation, trying to see who in the room gets it, because that, that's kind of the person that I know that I'm going to want to be friends with, you know, and that was the idea for my first print on demand shop is let's make a shop for people that throw out the movie references and movie quotes in every situation, no matter how annoying it is, uh, funerals, bar mitzvahs, parties, whatever, and then, you know, kind of uh, uh, expand on that. And it, it, I, I feel like it's it's done pretty well so far because here I am with you. And I never would have thought that that would be a thing <laughs> four years ago. That's right. Well, uh, certainly happy that you found so much success doing something you love. I mean, that's something I think that, that would really translate to our community here is that uh, we, we, uh, POD and Printify gives you the freedom and the flexibility to find that kind of success while doing something you love. So I, I think that's absolutely wonderful. And you're certainly certainly uh, uh, the, the guy that uh, we, we want to talk to about that. So and, and there was another thing you, you uh, uh, mentioned in there about um, you know, uh, making a few mistakes and, you know, finding that uh, that that formula that works. And that's the really the first thing we want to get across to our community in this webinar is 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 really, you know, 
where did you make your mistakes along the way and, 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 and where did, and where did you, and how did you find those formula formulas that work so that the viewers out there can, can learn from that experience and then shorten their journey uh, to, to success while benefiting uh, from your, from your uh, 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 successes and failures. Learning from my mistakes. Right. Um, exactly. And I, I think that it's funny the way that it all actually worked out is that, you know, I do this for a living every day, which is where I build brands for people. I build online presences. I grow their presences. You know, I design their websites. I get them all set up on the internet every day. And then when it came down to doing my own store, I feel like I did everything wrong. But it was also because it was the first time I was doing it. When I originally launched my Etsy shop, I want to say that I launched it with 130 or 150, somewhere in their designs of stuff, right? And very quickly, I learned how much of a mistake that is because the brand that I built, Culture Popped, didn't exist before this Etsy shop. And that's all that it was ever intended to be. Granted, it's grown to more than that, and we'll talk about that later. But I think that uh, uh, parlaying in what I know in my everyday work life with building brands and marketing and how to get attention uh, from people is that you you want to make sure that you know what your brand is going to at least try to be first, right? It, it doesn't have to end up being that way, right? It doesn't, it doesn't have to be like a be all end all of what you start out with. It doesn't really matter where you start. It matters where you want to end up. And that was something I learned the hard way. Because out of probably 150 of those designs that I created and uploaded, I would say that there's still probably about 80 or 90 that have never sold a single one. And whether that is because at the time I didn't know the proper steps for optimizing an Etsy listing, because I'd never had an Etsy shop before, I didn't realize the importance of let's call it quality over quantity and something that I follow in a lot of, let's say, you know, uh, brands in my field, pop culture brands. This shirt that I'm wearing is from a company called Roosevelt's and I am a Hawaiian shirt guy and they make Hawaiian shirts that are catered to pop culture. They do drops every now and then they didn't launch their entire catalog off of their first jump. And that's where I made the mistake was that I launched so many items. I didn't optimize them. And I just went, Right. It was like uh, uh, trying to kill a mosquito with a shotgun when all you need is is a really good, you know, uh, rolled up newspaper or fly swatter. That was my biggest mistake. Um, I set everything for automation. I didn't go in and double check and make any type of tweaks whatsoever. Um, and I, the first person that bought one of my items was a friend that I worked with. And that was like the first sale that I got in the first couple months and I got a little discouraged and it didn't help that I was also miserable at my job. And the reason I started designing things, I had never opened Adobe Illustrator before opening a POD shop. I learned Adobe Illustrator by opening a POD shop, which parlayed over into my daily life of graphic design and marketing because I was using another program. So one kind of fed the other. And as I kept learning, I got better and better at choosing which products I had in my shop. I think at one time there was about 400 products in my shop. And right now it's a fraction of that for, for somewhat calculated reasons for the most part, because I'm going back, removing the old listings that I had, tweaking them, making them better and then relaunching them with more powerful, you know, uh, marketing, SEO and things like that. Because people don't realize how important that is. Everybody wants to sign up for a POD shop on Etsy without a shop brand, without branded listings, without uh, uh, mock-ups and things like that. Just want to shoot it all over there. And because of the Instagram influencer, TikTok real, you know, TikTok generation and things like that, you see all these immediate success stories of people bragging about how they made a million dollars on print on demand, but they're talking about gross income. They're not talking about net. They're not talking about the ups and downs. They want to give you the bigger picture to reel them in, in order to get your attention and then hopefully sell you a course. You know, I give people advice every day about this stuff and I never charge for advice. It's that when you want me to do the work for you, that's when, you know, I, I got to start, you know, charging and stuff like that. But it's, it's been a crazy ride. Uh, I, to be truthful, I really couldn't be happier. And I've said to you guys on private channels that I owe a lot to Printify. I had no idea what it was when I first signed up, did some things wrong. And, and here I am, I get to be your first inaugural guy on this, which is ridiculous to me. 
Perfect. Wonderful. And there is a few things you said in there that I think we, uh, that, that we should touch on before we move on, just, just so we get that point across to our audience out there. It's, uh, it, may, it may be a little bit counterintuitive, but what you said about you know, offering everything at once and, and, and not optimizing everything seems like a good plan at first because, hey, I'm going to make as many products as, as possible. I'm going to cast a wide net and then I'll, I'll appeal to everybody, which is not the best strategy for conversion. So learning that the hard way, as you did, you managed to uh, uh, streamline your product offering and uh, optimize for for Etsy success. And we'll and we'll get a little bit into that of how you particularly optimize your 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 store for success specifically on on, on Etsy. And of course, uh, what you mentioned about Printify uh, is is completely accurate. Um, we we certainly give POD merchants like you the freedom and flexibility to try these sort of new things uh, without a lot of upfront costs. Because I mean, what does it cost you to upload a, upload a a design uh, to a Printify product and publish it to your Etsy store. I mean, the the nominal Etsy fees, uh, of course, but then you get to see what works, what doesn't, filter out the uh, uh, stuff that doesn't work, keep the stuff up there that does, and and, and on and on the process goes, correct? Correct. No, and it's besides, you know, I believe it's a 20 cent listing fee. You know, uh, it's, it's it, you know, uh, it, it's time. You know, I, I, you know, everybody wants to throw every design they have at the wall, but I think it's more important to kind of sit back and instead of getting excited about I'm going to open the next best Printify, you need to manage your you need to manage your expectations, and that was something that I learned uh, very, very quickly and heavily after opening this shop. And which is funny because I always told everyone manage your expectations when you're promising this, you know, under promise and over deliver, you know, things like that. I used to run large uh, events here in Atlantic City, beer festival, seafood festival with the company that I work with. Now I run my own Comic-Con and learning that going off on my own and running my Comic-Con, I learned, you know, managing expectations in anything is got to be paramount, you know, and I even have the the words on my wall in my agency. I don't remember what they say, but it's put customers first, exude passion, innovate, take ownership, foster teamwork, inspire, uh, go above and beyond, be transparent, stay humble and make it fun. I like that's been on my wall for two years, two and a half years now. And I look at it every single morning, but I still can't recite it, you know, but th those are important. Those are the core values of anything you're going to do, because you have to remember if this blows up, if you open a pr printify shop and you start making $10,000 a month, you are on the hook for being representative of that brand right? Printify is going to be your, your, your handler. They're going to be your, everything is okay. If something goes wrong, we got you covered. You know, we will do everything we can to help you. And I stand by that. I love Printify's customer service. Never had an issue in all my years, really, you know, being with the platform, but you have to think ahead. Don't just think about when you're opening, think about where this could go in two years and how people are going to perceive you. You don't have to have it all perfect right out of the gate. Nobody will. And if you're expecting that, you're going to be disappointed. You have to take your ego out of it, no matter what you've done in the past. If you've never done print on demand, and if you've never built a brand, take your ego out in anything you've ever done, start fresh and manage your expectations. Because as you learn, you will grow and that will help you achieve greater success. That's a, a very good point. Words of wisdom, Paul, sort of uh, how you put it, uh, having a, a not only a short term plan, but a long term plan for your goal for uh, building your brand. I think it's absolutely wonderful. And, and that's something that we that we uh, sh should get across to our community. And um, I, I want to drill down a little bit on this brand building that that you mentioned and sort of how that applies to the Etsy business model, uh, the, the Etsy marketplace models, so to speak. Now, uh, in some of the conversations I have with the merchants that I work with, is they seem to think that uh, I open a store on Etsy. Uh, it's a marketplace. There's customers everywhere. I just need to open open up my store and, and orders are going to start coming in. Can you tell us a little bit about how you market your Etsy store and, and maybe uh, uh, some, some, some tips or on, on uh, search on SEO for, for, for your uh, Etsy store? Sure. Um, so the thing you have to remember first is that Etsy is a marketplace, much similar to eBay, minus all the auctions and things like that, right? So you have a double-edged sword. Uh, the, the good side of it being is that when you put a listing up on Etsy, if you do it right, let's say make your listing stand out, whether it be the title, uh, uh, the, uh, the, the, whether it be the title, the thumbnail, a thumbnail video, listing information and things like that. And as far and clear expectations that you set, you have a lot of competition, 
right? So what can you do to stand out from that competition? My biggest thing is when you send something from Printify over to Etsy, Printify to Etsy takes about, it takes, I would say about 90% of the work out of it. What you have to remember is that Etsy isn't always going to play nice with outside platforms. There are certain things that third-party APIs are not able to always connect with when you have this type of integration. And I, again, I learned that in the hard way in my daily job, trying to connect this to that, you know, a restaurant website to a POS, there's, there could be some hiccups and it's not because it's any type of shortcoming with, uh, with, with Printify. It is how Etsy's allows APIs to connect, right? So if you were to go and I, so fun fact, I recently found my very first design and very first listing and I updated it yesterday because I hadn't touched it in two years. So this was the very first thing that I ever designed for Etsy, right? Let's talk pop culture and mashups. I took the style that would be of the Toy Story logo, right? And you can see it's got the, the stylized typeface here. It's got the claw and got the little aliens, right? But then I put Obey Your Master. So I, I come from the metal, hardcore, punk rock uh, 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 scene as, as, a, as a younger person, right? So I always love the idea of mashup. So I designed this shirt. I think I've sold in the four years that I've had this listing up here. Now, I think I've sold maybe half a dozen of them, but I only recently started really optimizing this particular listing because it was such an old listing. I forgot about it, right? You're going to concentrate on the things that sell and sometimes other things are going to fall to the wayside. So having certain things like the, let me tell you, the mock-ups, Printify has a little thing that pops up when you're listing something and designing something for a company called Place It. Do place it. Or if you're not going to do place it, find some type of other website that's going to allow you to do mock-ups. They take all the guesswork out of the stuff. You don't have to have a ton of design experience. You just have to have your design ready, right? Because before this came along, I was making my mock-ups myself in Illustrator and Photoshop and doing all this stuff. I'm a fan of place it. I already have an Envato account for my web design agency for stock videos, stock photos, and things like that. But having a listing like this to where the, the, the thumbnail is unique and it's not just that, right? Because even though this isn't a real shirt that someone wearing that you sent them, you're able to mimic your design exactly, right? Find the style of item or close to as you can and get there. So when you have something like this, I cannot tell you the importance of going into the editing of your listing, right? And properly adjusting everything. I have a size thumbnail here that I use. That I, anytime I use this type of shirt, I put the size chart in one of the photos, right? Because that's going to be, especially with clothing, that is going to be a major question you get all the time is that how does this fit? What are the measurements of blank? And to be honest with you, I didn't do it myself for the longest time. I learned it the hard way by answering five, 10, 15 messages in a month on a single item, you know, about uh, uh, how does this fit? Is it fit large? Is it fit small? I'm a guy. And if I have a women's t-shirt, I don't know how it fits. All I can give you is the facts here. Printify has these on their site, right? They, you have the, the size charts on your site. You can line them out and you can put them in a photo so, and make sure that they're the last photo. Other than that, the importance of when you have a color option on a certain shirt, go into the Etsy listing and make sure that you are linking your photos to the variants because someone might not know what's the difference between Tahiti blue, which is like my favorite shirt color ever, and solid turquoise. People aren't necessarily going to know the difference from that. And just because Etsy's, you know, release of APIs doesn't necessarily allow you to change that in Printify, in Etsy, all you have to do is go here to this little button, link photos, and then select the one that comes in. If you don't remember what it is, you can go into your store and look on one tab and say, okay, that's the Tahiti blue, link that to there. This is that. And then, you know, having all of your ducks in a row and all the information there, you know, you're going to want to be transparent about the fact that you have a company like SwiftPod make your shirts because it will list it on there. You don't want to, let's say, get caught with your pants down, right? You don't want to have a listing on Etsy. It says handmade by Culture Popped. 
And then when they receive the shirt, it comes in a bag that says culture pop, but it's not from my location necessarily. You want to prepare yourselves and get ahead of any of those because as long as you have the verbiage, which I do, I have a sticky note um, on my computer that I copy and I paste into every single listing, whether it be shipping, canceling an order, estimated ship by dates, returns, refunds, and exchanges, and things like that. I put all of this in the listing at the very bottom. So that way that covers your butt, so to speak, you know, yeah. um, it, it, it can be, it can be overwhelming at first, but don't let yourself get too crazy with the detail at first, because you still need to learn the system. But my top recommendations by far are get place it or another company that offers uh, mock-ups. Make sure that you have the size chart listing in your photos, or if you don't want to have the photo, put it in your text here in the, in the size chart and then save that because you're going to use that t-shirt again. I can't tell you how many times I just screenshotted the next level 3,600 shirt, which is my favorite on the, on the, uh, on the shop, by the way, I love the way they fit. I'm an all torso guy and I've got kind of broad shoulders and an extra large actually fits me. Set yourself up and do a few items of each style, whether it be your mugs or your t-shirts, uh, area rugs are the best selling item in my shop by far. Um, set yourself up for that because people are going to ask. And if you can rule out as many questions as possible for before someone purchases, you have a greater chance of making the sale. What does this look like on a person? How do the sizes fit? And what's the information that I need to know about it? Those are probably my top, uh, those are probably my top tips as far as at least getting started. Let's call it for your first launch. You know, if you launch a shop with 10 items, I would say that's, that's my coverage because that's manageable as well. Right. Right. Okay. Wow. There's a, a, a lot of stuff in there that is, is, is important that, that we unpack uh, when it comes to uh, those uh, mock-ups that you use. I mean, I, I would agree with you 100%. Our research shows that mock-ups that uh, feature real, real life models highly outperform uh, static images of, of, of just the t-shirts themselves. And uh, when I talk to my merchants, I always recommend that they uh, use uh, real people, you know, or, or order, order some products, take your friends to the park and, you know, take some pictures, put those up there. That really resonates and it lets you stand out from the crowd. Order some, uh, add, order adding, some adding that, yeah. Exactly. Adding that size chart to, to, to your uh, Etsy listings as, as a photograph there in the, uh, in the uh, uh, pr product uh, picture carousel. Absolutely, absolutely crucial. Um, and one thing I don't, I don't think, I think we can't let, let pass is the transparency in which you operate your, uh, your uh Etsy store right. that really comes across well to, 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 to customers. They feel uh, if, if you're, if you're transparent, then they feel comfortable buying from you and they feel comfortable coming back to you uh, over and over and over again. But if, okay. In, in, in two minutes, if I'm a brand new Etsy merchant, what do you, what would you tell me in terms of marketing my store? What do I need to do to, to uh, be, be successful uh, on Etsy? <clears throat> First thing is find your niche. That's the most important thing. My niche is pop culture references. And I've dealt with this uh, with a few people in our Printify POD Facebook group uh, who seem to think I am skirting the line of intellectual property and things like that. What I'm doing is I'm creating fan art of things that you see in other things which are not copyrighted, right? And I take those and I know that the life that I live, I go to comic conventions, horror conventions, I love TV, movies, Back to the Future is my favorite thing ever. I found my niche first. That is your number one thing. And then stick to that. That's find your niche first, stick to that, and then let everything build from there. The name, your social media handles, whether you decide to buy a domain, find your niche first. If you, you're putting the cart before the horse, if you do anything besides that. Okay. Um, good. So, so Find your niche. Make sure you have a, a, a focused uh, product lineup, and make sure and not only find find your niche, but you know find your niche that you actually uh, that 
uh, applies to you personally so that so that you uh, as a business owner and operator have an inherent knowledge of what it is you're trying to get out there. Because if you know, if you know your uh, uh, cu- customers, if you know what they're looking for, it's just going to be that much more easier for you to connect with them and put something out there that they actually want to buy. Correct? Yes. Yeah. Correct. Okay. Excellent. And you mentioned something in there about social media. Now, a lot of people think that I don't need uh, to uh, ramp up my social media when it when it comes to uh, my Etsy shop. That's for Shopify stores. But actually, no. And this is something you are uniquely uh, uh, knowledgeable about. So just take us through uh, your social media strategy for your Etsy store. So I will be the first to admit that because I run social media for so many other brands that at times my social media for culture pop can can go a little dry uh, at times. But anyone who thinks that social media is not important for the building of any brand whatsoever is dead wrong. And I'll put it this way. The dinosaurs didn't know they were going extinct when it was happening. If you think that Facebook, Instagram, TikTok, and depending on the brand, Twitter is not important in this day and age. You are so far off the mark and you are completely missing the conversation that everybody is having, right? Um, Even if you're posting once a week, it's better than nothing because if you're selling something that fits a niche, there is a niche out there for it. If it exists, there are fans of it, and that's all there is to it. Now you take off the you take off the table sometimes the amount of people you can reach depending on your niche, but you need to figure out in the beginning how far do you want to push this niche? How many people do you want to reach? Do you want quality or do you want quantity? So having you know an Instagram page, a Facebook page that have the same at symbol, you know, Facebook.com slash culture popped. I went through and before I even named the company, what I was doing, I went and I brainstormed names and I bought the domain and I logged up all of the social media handles. So that way I have culture popped with a K for everything. Okay. Yeah. And that's, that's sort of the long-term planning that you have to do upfront as well. So, so here we are back to our short-term and and long-term plans again. Correct. Okay. Um, So good. Um, So What's what specifically should should our, our, our community know about uh, managing social media for their Etsy store specific to what's going on this year? What's 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 what what, what are the trends? What is specific to to uh, this uh, 2022? 2022 right now, in my experience from, you know, my every day is Instagram reels. It's Instagram. all on Instagram reels. I was able to get one of my clients who is a fencing and flooring company from the Panhandle of Florida. Wonderful people. We put up a trend on Instagram Reels and it almost hit 10,000 views. And that's what's called VFM, viral for me. It doesn't necessarily mean you hit millions of views, but when you're targeting a specific area, if you're, let's say, a local business, viral for me is something that happens when your video hits X amount of views compared to your following. Instagram is pushing video, 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 find a trend, find a way to hop on the trend for your niche, which my favorite person to follow on Instagram for this, his name is Brock Johnson. His username is Brock 11 Johnson. He does little tutorials and things like that. You can literally cater any niche to an Instagram real trend. If you're creative enough, um, as far as advertising goes, TikTok advertising is the best bang for its buck right now right next to Instagram stories advertising. With the advent of iOS 14, Facebook advertising took an absolute dump. So I have found a massive ROI percentage better on Instagram, specifically in the stories section. Okay. I'm really glad you mentioned that because a lot of people have been coming to me since that uh, Facebook, uh, iOS, uh, let's let's call it a kerfuffle that kind of uh, reshuffled the deck as a, as a, in terms of of Facebook ads, and and they're looking for that next best thing. So it, Instagram Reels, uh, TikTok itself, I mean, all, all this kind of stuff, any and, 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 um, any of these sort of uh, uh, powerful social social media tools, I, I think uh, is is a should, should be a no brainer for any POD merchant. So I'm I'm sure. very very happy to hear that you are are are, are on board with that. Okay. Mm-hmm. So, um, all right. Well, um, so fi- finding a niche, uh, making use of the social media tools out there, be active. I mean, uh, 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 and if you are, are connecting with a, a, a niche that you are, 
um, uh, uh, that, that that you your, yourself are, are are a participant of. You're going to be that much that much uh, closer to uh, connecting with your uh, connecting with your uh, audience. So right. um, don't try to don't try the, to the, infiltrate. Don't try to infiltrate a niche that you don't belong to, because when you come across somebody who is a deep fan of that, who is a big fan of that, they're going to cut you down. They're going to they're going to tell that you're uh, what do they call it in the mob movies? Fugazi. They're going to tell that you're just hawking stuff to hawk stuff. Find something that you love. Find something that you enjoy. Find something that's your passion and start something there. Not just to necessarily make money. If you do it with your passion and you do it for your love of it, the money can come. And if you do it right, it will come. Don't just chase the dollar, chase your passion. The money will come later. Wonderful point. And passion is something you have in spades. Thank you so much for uh, choosing to uh, share your story with our community. I think everybody was, uh, was, is uh, greater for it or is, is better off for it. And uh, as, uh, as, as I mentioned previously, you can uh, rewatch this uh, webinar on printify.com slash webinars, as well as our YouTube channel. You'll be able to find it there. Um, but uh, Paul, like uh, if, if, uh, if, if our community out there wants to go to uh, culture shop to buy something from you or uh, make use of your services, how would they do that? So there's two ways you can get a hold of me. Either you can go. So speaking back before, uh, Culture Popped was never meant to be anything more than an Etsy website. But what it ended up becoming is, is we became a news and pop culture website that does news articles on upcoming movies, comic books, gaming, and things like that. But we also happen to have our Printify shop tied in partially to the actual website. Um, I do run uh, a, a web design and marketing agency out of Atlantic City, Spotlight Marketing Solutions. A little bit of on the shoulder here, we are the highest rated and best rated web design and marketing agency in the Atlantic City area, but I do have clients in Florida, upstate New York, North Carolina, all over the place. Uh, we actually did just start recently offering a full package deal that if you want us to create the entire brand, the website, the Etsy shop, the logo, and your first you know, 10, 20, or 30 designs, we will do that for you for one flat fee. And I didn't do it because I'm chasing the money. I did it because I have seen what this can do. If you go to the stats in my shop, my shop has crested the six figure mark. Now it took three and a half years to get there, but how incredible is that? Because that, that is money that I've been able to take, invest in other things, invest in my family, reinvest in life. And here I am. I put people before profit in what I do. And that's helped me in spades tenfold because I just enjoy what I do. So if anyone needs to get a hold of me, you can take the high road and email me at culturepop at gmail, culture with a K, or you can find Spotlight Marketing Solutions LLC on the web. Drop me a line and never charge for advice or anything like that, or to give you an audit of your store. Uh, but if you wanted me to set something up for you, then we'll figure something out. Just make sure to mention this webinar as a reference. And I'd be happy to, you know, give, a, let's call it a, a Printify uh, inner circle referral discount because, I just, like I said, I have so much to thank for Printify because I I don't know what it would have done. I don't know what I would have done if I wasn't able to have this outlet that I do with Printify. That's wonderful, Paul. And we'll have all those links in, available in our chat so you so you'll know how to find those, Paul. I can't say thank you enough. I mean, this was absolutely wonderful. Thank you Appreciate for taking it. your time to share with us, to, to uh, share your story with our, with not only our, our, our Etsy merchants, but with our, our merchants at large. This was absolutely wonderful. Um, so uh, again, if you want to avail yourself of Paul's services, please do so. We'll have those links in the chat. All right. Well, as we mentioned previously, this is only our first webinar in an ongoing series of webinars we'll be putting on this year called Printify Professionals, where we sit down with Printify's most successful merchants, where they share their ins and outs, their do's and don'ts with you. So you can be a, become a more profitable merchant as part of our commitment to your success. Uh, these webinars will be available on printify.com slash webinars, and eventually we'll make it up onto our YouTube channel. So you can revisit this at your leisure. Thank you so much for joining us. My name is Martin. I'll see you next time. Bye-bye.